so I'm watching Joe Rogan's podcast. Right. And his whole setup is fucking awesome. Right. But, I mean, it's a huge studio. They got a lot of money and everything. But they had, I know they had Ari, uh, whatever that comedian's name is. Aziz and Sorry? No, no, no. Not Aziz. Oh. Uh, not Aziz. Uh, Ari's, uh, like, uh, he's a buddy of Joe Rogan's. Joe oh, okay. Rogan talks about him all the time. Right. Um, Bert. The guy who talks does the bit about being the machine in Russia when he took a school field trip. I don't know that I rem- I'm familiar with that. He's a big drunk like party kind of comedian. Uh, okay. He's he's pretty funny. Right. And then another comedian on there that I can't remember his name. But, right. Right. Uh, halfway through the podcast, they look over and one of them's like, "Are you a fucking animal?" And Ari's like, "What?" And they're like, "Go to the bathroom." And he's like, "No, I'm not gonna miss the conversation." Dude's pissing in a cup. <laughs> Because he doesn't want to leave the podcast. Okay, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> no, 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 we don't need to do that. We don't need the Mountain Dew but, bottles. But water cooler, <laughs> I think that's a total possibility once we oh, get yeah. rid of this big ass table. Because right now we got like a six foot by three foot folding table. Yeah. And it's fine for right now, but it's like, um, it, it takes up a lot of the room. And Luke's a big dude. Yeah. And it, it can be difficult for Luke to get in and out of this. It's. I can imagine it's a little uncomfortable because, dude, I'm I'm like no, it's it's just annoying getting through. Yeah. But uh, like you like like we talked about getting a uh, card table, some like four by four, that I think would be perfect. See, for us. the card table um, wouldn't be. I don't think it would be robust enough when it comes to these things. Well, not I mean, an ad. I don't mean an actual. Card I, table, I know what you're saying, but like like a card, yeah, kind of table. I, 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 that's why I'm kind of looking yeah, around. The, mi- the mics are the only thing that might be a little bit more difficult. But I mean, that's why I'm looking for a table that's like the Lifetime or the Costco table in our instance that we have. Yeah. But is four feet by four feet square. And what I was thinking is like kind of having it in a diamond shape, mm-hmm. where it's easier to just sit down. There's plenty of room behind you because it's just corners and. You know, we can put, we can set the camera up like over here against us, and it'd be fine. And you know, we were talking about getting a green screen. You know, fucking put the green screen behind us and cast dumb shit to the green screen. That would be funny. Yeah, just and it would be. You know, what would be really funny is uh, like you mentioned, if we ever got to the point where we wanted like a separate camera, a separate camera. Yeah. Actually, have camera angles and stuff. If when one person didn't have the green screen behind them, it's just the normal wall with the foam. Flip to the other person, and they've got like stars and shit behind them, or like the MS pipes screensaver rolls. <laughs> <laughs> or like a yeah, like a Windows XP has crashed screen. Yeah. Just to, every time it switches back and forth. I swear to God, I'll wear green shirts like every day. I, I honestly, I think for me, it would depend on how much editing I'd have to do for that. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd be completely down for doing throw, just throwing silly shit in there because another thing we're we're considering, and we were just talking about this, is you know possibly. Uh, upping our ante on the videos and releasing actual videos instead of just yeah. audio. We'll see, though. I, I'm not guaranteeing that. But anyway. But yeah, you know. You know but just uh, we have a podcast expanding and stuff like that. We're the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Joe. Uh, I'm Luke. And, uh, you know, we're coming to you today. Just have a little conversation like we always do. That's our shtick. Yeah. That's always so, been our uh, shtick. We were talking about the uh, Predator trailer. Yeah. Um, just came out. You know, I, I, I honestly, like, even before seeing this trailer... I had no hopes for this movie. I mean, I I don't have any strong opinion either way. To be honest with you, yeah. I I never I I never watched Aliens and Aliens versus Predator or any Predator movies. So I I don't. Did care. you see the first one? No, oh, I never did. No, I, you know. Remember, we we talked about yeah. this. I never got into that, yeah. and it's it's less that I didn't care, and more that you know it just wasn't a thing that we watched. Yeah, we were the Star Trek people. We you know we watched Star Trek. Yeah, you fact, guys, you were TV, more TV family. We than were definitely more TV family. Yeah, I mean, I, I was I wasn't much of a movie a movie goer. We never went to the movies. We yeah. never we we had a large collection of movies, but I I I don't remember if Alien or Aliens either of those were ever a part of that. Yeah, I, I think we may have had AVP, mm-hmm. but because uh, I can distinctly remember its its spinal cover with the stylized A and the V and the P and the, yeah. all the the fucking logo. But uh, I can't remember ever watching the movie. Yeah. Like, I, I, if you, I mean, beyond, like, the tropes that we all know about, you know, him being invisible and just fucking things up in the jungle, I don't know anything about yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I so, can understand that. So though. when we sat there and watched it, it was like, oh, this is kind of okay. Yeah, I, you, I, you just don't. I, there are beats to the Predator that they hit in the trailer that some of them were good. And then, honestly... Overall, the trailer doesn't make me feel any more like excited to see this the movie. It, honestly, 
for a trailer for an action movie, I guess for like a monster ish action military movie. Yeah. Uh it did okay. I mean, yeah, but, I, I gotta say on that respect, yeah. I, I'm down to see it just out of curiosity. Yeah, and like you, you mentioned, um uh, uh Keegan Mike Keegan Mike Key, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's I was it. I was couldn't remember which one. I mean, yeah, honestly, do, yeah. Peel. No, 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 he's not Peel. Peel's the shorter chunk. Peel's the one short one who that does. Made, that made the, the bad get out. Get out, yeah, which I still love. That's Great still one movie. of my favorite. One of my favorite horror movies. So glad I bought that on Blu-ray. Yeah, and I watched mean, it. I mean, I, I'm not a horror movie fan. Yeah. I, I don't go out of my way to see horror movies. But, uh, oh, hey, Luke's microphone just Yeah, my mic decided that it didn't want to live anymore. <laughs> just like, committed some cool. I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> no, you, that's the wrong. That's that the wrong out. one. You need to hit the the one on the bottom. Yep. That one controls the uh, twisty. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Oh, Pardon Lord. us, folks. Luke's having some technical difficulties. No. <laughs> you got it, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I get it. All I'm right. just putting it on here better. Yeah. It's it's. I mean, this table it does not lend itself to much. So there's only like a few spots where we can actually put the fucking thing. Because of like all the little hole bubble things at the bottom, I don't know why they're there. I guess probably to save money. Oh yeah, yeah, probably. Drill little little like domes or I don't know what to call them cones uh, in the plastic to save some cash. I fucking hate. Yeah, yeah. Like they're ch- cheaping out on the uh, fucking plastic. The <laughs> fucking uh, um, God, what was his name? Um, Mitch Hedberg. He's owed a lot of letters from uh, Kit Kat. <laughs> Do you remember that bit? Oh my god, your your mic is like it, it's picking you up way more than it ever did before. No, I think it got too close. But uh, do you remember that bit where he talks about a uh, Kit Kat uh, withholding chocolate? To put the name in the candy bars. Oh he's, yeah, he's yeah. gonna go to the factory and demand all his letters. <laughs> but uh, that does sound like something Mitch would say. Yeah, uh, I was lucky enough that uh, like my my dad wasn't huge into uh, a lot of movies, and I mean. I don't remember the release for Predator, the original Predator, but I was definitely way young at the time. Right, right. Like, I might have been, like, a couple years old, because I think it was in the 80s, the late 80s. Uh, And I was born in 88. I mean, you got me. I don't fucking know, man. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, I think, like, I, I was way too young for that. But when I got a little bit older, my dad was into, like, cheesy action movies. Right. I like, mean, cheesy love... action movies are the best. Yeah. He'd love watching, like, stupid Arnold Schwarzenegger stuff. And our channel, my the channel we watched growing up a lot of times was, like, uh, TBS. Right. Where yeah. they would, like, sh- get a movie on, like, basically syndication. And for a weekend, they'd show the movie 900 times. <laughs> Oh yeah, like like Cartoon Network did with fucking Iron Giant. Yeah, which that is one why day I hate Iron Giant because it failed. I won't let that go. I won't let that go. I fucking yeah. hate Cartoon Network for that. <laughs> it's so good movie, but uh, yeah. So that's that's where I originally saw it's a Predator terrible. movie, and uh, I mean that's where I fell in love with it. Predator's just one of those fucking awesome awesome movie monsters. One of the fucking best movie monster designs. Coolest of powers. Just everything about the Predator is cool. Yeah. Which is why in this trailer, like, they show a bunch of bullshit. No, I don't, I don't fucking care. There's like uh, uh, Olivia Munn is in the trailer. She oh, plays yeah, a yeah. fucking scientist, and she's like, "They're splicing DNA." I don't need to know that. I don't um, even want to hear that. I don't it's a fucking predator care. movie. All I need is that clicking sound he makes. Fucking military dudes in the jungle. Uh, screaming and like fucking getting dragged into the darkness and shit and like maybe an outline of the predator and that's fucking a, the, a yell or something and that's all you need yeah, and you've yeah. sold me on the predator trailer this bullshit no fuck you this it's, is... it's almost like they're trying to tell an origin story uh yeah it almost seems like that like like that, that honestly from from the very first like once you get past like the opening uh, title sequences, yeah, and it shows the kid with the mask, I, like dude, that was the very first thing I felt was like this is an origin story, isn't it? Yeah. It's like it's an origin story for something we don't need an origin for. You know, I was thinking it almost it feels like an like a re it, it feels like one of those fucking bullshit reboots, and I use that in quotations where they acknowledge they they sort of acknowledge that the there was a movie before it, right? That it exists, but they're gonna pretend like. They, they never mention it again, like never talk about it. Like, oh, they never there reference was a, the events in it or anything. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, there was a, a squad that got taken out down in uh, fucking South America and hush hush. And that like that might be all we get or something. Honestly, when I watched the trailer alone, like yesterday, 
uh, and he's doing that debriefing, there was a split second where all this show was some dude's arm. I was like, oh my god, if they're debriefing fucking Arnold. And that's what they're going to do. And then continue off that with, like, seriously acknowledging the first movie. I would have been so hyped. No. Fucking new guy. I don't even know who the actor was. I didn't give a fuck. I, I, I mean, aside from Olivia Munn, I don't know who's in this movie. And, and I only know Olivia Munn is... Oh, yeah. Keegan Michael Yeah, Key. that's it. Keegan Michael... Uh, Michael Keegan Key. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Whatever um, his fucking name is. Mike, we love you, man. Yeah. But, uh, so, yeah, I, I don't care. No, yeah. It's, Honestly, it was when I saw him in the movies, like, okay, I'll go see it. Just uh, because I want to see him in more things. Even if it's not a funny role, even if it's not, a, like, I just want to see him in stuff. Exactly. He's you cool. Uh, both of those guys deserve to be in a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean. Uh, and at least the one thing that I'm sure, I'm pretty sure they probably got right, is if you see a movie like Predator, and they're going to at least be the teeniest bit true to the Predator series or to the name Predator. Right. Um, if they've got 15 names of actors in the movie, you know 14, probably. 14 of those people are fucking dead before because the end. the last one is the Predator. Yeah, yeah, like like you know majority of those actors that are listed, like, these like B-list, C-list actors, they're all fucking dead. It's just how they die and how awesome it'll be when they die. So, I mean, I, hopefully it turns out better, but, uh, oh, man, that trailer was just... It was mediocre. Mediocre. I mean, like, the Predator part was cool. You know, him yeah. beating the shit out of the, out of the military dude from the trailer. I was like, all right, I'm okay with that. There's that scene where he drops from a ceiling to the security guard and, like, slashes his throat with the little Predator, uh, like, a throwing star thingy. Right. And it just looks so cheesy when it happened. Like, maybe that's an early cut. So they haven't like. I mean, yeah. There's, there, I mean, there's still a lot for them to fix. It's not coming out until September. So yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, yeah. They've got, got they've got time. They probably to, will do to fix reshoots that, and stuff you know, too. Fix that in post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. There's always there's always reshoot to do. And I, um, I, I, I like. I'm not uh, calling out just this trailer. Lots and lots of trailers. The first trailer you see isn't at all indicative of what the movie comes out. Like even Jurassic World, the CGI was. Not great in the movie. Some scenes were better than others, but they did make it much better from that original trailer. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't remember being super impressed with the original CGI, but when we saw the actual movie, it's like, oh, no, this is this is much better than they let on. Like, yeah, this yeah, is yeah, much yeah. better than, than I remember in that trailer. Um, and, you know, I, honestly, stuff like The Last Jedi was the same way. Like, the CGI was much better in what we saw in the final product yeah. than the actual, you know, Whatever shit trailer they they showed. Yeah, I, I honestly kind of like them waiting on releasing trailers nowadays. Honestly, I, I'm almost to a point where it's like, you know what? If you're gonna make a movie, don't fucking release. It. Just make the movie. Just drop the movie one day. That's it. That'd be an interesting take. Although I will say though, do some marketing, um, of course. You know, do some marketing. You know, throw out some posters yeah. and shit like that. Whatever. Oh my god, if you can do marketing even on the even even a tenth of as well as they're doing marketing for Deadpool 2. Oh, my God. Because it's like the Deadpool marketing was amazing, Deadpool but they 2? didn't have much of a budget. Deadpool 2, they're like, here is all the money. Have fun with your marketing. I, I And mean, they're dude, just... Oh. The Celine Dion Deadpool video. Oh, my God. That was amazing. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if I would believe it, but... Um, if that was actually Ryan Reynolds dancing, it was. It, it wasn't. But they, they, there's like, uh, there's pictures of him hanging out with the dude who did do the dancing, and it's yeah. like, kind of like adorable. I the mean, dude's like a legit, like nice guy. Like, uh, uh, I, I didn't read the whole story on him, right. but he's like, he's like a dancer, and you know, just a young guy who's trying to make his way in dancing. And they did this trailer for him, and yeah, it was just, it was just cool. The way I, I want to know what, from his perspective, what was it like? To of all people sit there and dance around Celine Dion, yeah, like how fucking how fucking like <laughs> how spandex suits. I want to know like how how fucking nervous was he that he was gonna trip up or something? Like, and not only that, the dude's dancing in heels in a spandex suit in heels. You know he could probably barely breathe. He could barely see. Yeah, absolutely amazing. And, and he did and it fucking amazing. It was so fantastic. I I watched that video at least three times. Oh yeah, that, that just back so to back. And the song there. is great too. I mean. The song yeah. yeah, so I mean that was that was actually kind of like really really cool. I mean, and and apparently there's been so many other dumb things they've done. Like I need to sit down and watch Dude, them. There are I like, just they, saw they, yeah the the video they just released. I haven't watched it yet. Which one? Um, oh, oh, the one where he goes and apologizes to the uh, to the uh, yes 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 uh, soccer player I guess or yeah David Beckham David Beckham yeah, yeah. that was that one's fucking great. I need to sit um, down and watch it. I really do. It's <laughs> and they hug. It's so good. 
<laughs> but uh, that move, that video is great. He answered a bunch of questions on Google, like from. Oh, you know, I did get, I did get, um, I did get like a notification in my newsfeed for that. Yeah. I haven't gotten, a, I haven't gotten around to sitting down and looking at it yet because I've been, I've just <laughs> oh, been so busy. It was busy. so good. It's just, it's should just I go Ryan see Reynolds. Deadpool with my parents? <laughs> yeah. It's so either you're under seventeen, or what does he say? Uh, uh, I wonder if I could pull it under here. 17 or something else. And he's like, either way, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds about right. Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, that that's the way it should be. Deadpool I, answering questions. Just fucking everything about the marketing is great. I mean, Deadpool has always been a fantastic character. And honestly, when you sit there and you look at, you know, it took 11 years for Ryan Reynolds to get this movie made. Yep, 11 I years mean, and then finally leaking that test footage. I mean, and that test footage was still so good. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's still something you can go back and watch now, even after the movie's been released. And I'm, I, I don't know. I guess I, I can't speak for everybody. I know I can speak for a lot of people when I say I'm 100% satisfied with that movie. Yeah. And the test footage, um, I think what we got in the final product versus the test footage is so amazing. It's so on point with what it needed to it's, be. Um, so when I saw that test footage, honestly, my first thought was um, my, my, my absolute, like, m- the most thing I could hope for, the thing I thought I can hope for the most was that we would get an animated Deadpool movie. Right. Uh, like a digital, uh, and I was hoping it wouldn't be shittily done digital, but I was just hoping for an animated Deadpool because the way that test footage was shot, like, and it was digital, I was like, and, and some of it was even like storyboards. Yeah, yeah, um, no, I mean, there, there were some, so some, good. some, yeah, some things they just hadn't done yet they yeah. weren't able to do the storyboard stuff instead. Yeah. And I was like, okay, they can never do this as a movie. But if I can get a digital or if I can get an animated movie, I'll be so happy. And then we ended up getting the actual movie and that basically that scene in the movie. I got to ask and you. And it was better than I could have ever hoped. Yeah, I got to ask you, like, how does it feel in this particular instance to be wrong? Yeah. Oh, it was just amazing. Like that that's one of those instances where you're like, holy shit, I'm so glad they proved me wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought because there's honestly, no chance Fox does this. I, I, be- I was the same way as you. Like, mm-hmm. there's. Like, this is amazing. I really, really want this, but they're not going to do it. It's the same thing where we talk, and uh, we've gone ad nauseum about different companies like Nintendo. They, this is something we, we should talk about as well in just a few minutes. Um, they're not doing a virtual console on the Switch. No, no. Um, and said, well, we they're... want to throw money at you. Well, Why won't you take our money? And I, that's, that's I, how I, I felt with Fox. agree. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Like, yeah, what they're opting to do is just pouring the games over and adding new features. It's like, yeah. okay, that's kind of neat. To be honest with you, I don't care about multipla- online multiplayer in Mario. I just want to fucking play Mario. Yeah. You know, like, come on. It's give interesting. Me, give me that, Nintendo. It, it, Nintendo, seriously, <laughs> you have a fucking catalog of what? Uh, 700 SNES games in the US, yeah. 1400 NES games. You've got all the Game Boy Color, you got the Game Boy Advance, you've got the Nintendo DS. You have a system that is capable of playing these games. You can't tell me that it's not because I've yeah. seen it. I fucking I've seen it with my own eyes. <laughs> I have seen a Shield. I I've, it. I've seen it. Yeah, I've got a Shield TV out there. They're the same fucking device. My Shield TV can do it. You're on, with Android. Android has way more overhead than the free BSD build you're using. So don't fucking tell me it's not possible. I've seen it be possible. I've played Smash Brothers on my Shield TV in 4K. Yeah, I know it can be done. You can do it, Nintendo. Fucking come on. Yeah. Now you got, you know. Oh, yeah, I knew we'd get off a little bit, but that's the same way I felt about Fox and right. Deadpool. All right. Is you own this property. There is a massive fan base. And just like happened, just like what ended up happening is there's a lot of people who knew of the character or probably majority of them had no idea. But you start putting that out there and all the people who love it are going, yeah, no, you got to check this out. This character Deadpool, he's fucking hilarious. He's brutal. Um, and it's going to be an awesome fucking movie. And people are like, you know, oh, who's this? And then the trailer drops and they're like, oh, oh, OK, this I looks mean, good. Dude, did I tell you I had an interaction Um we got a local shell station up here on the corner, right? Yeah. Um, there's nice old ladies that own it and run it. And I was in there with my Deadpool hoodie on, like, I think Tuesday morning. I was grabbing some things that I needed that I just didn't have at home, and I was too fucking lazy to go in, to an actual store, I guess, because it's, it's a convenience slash gas station. So I go up there, and uh, I have my Deadpool hoodie on the old lady. She, she's such a great Oh, she's like, oh yeah, that movie's coming out soon. Yeah, and I oh, actually that would be there, amazing. I sat there and like, yeah, no, the first one was great. She's like, yeah, it really was. And then she starts talking to him about Infinity War, and it's like, dude, yeah. this is awesome. Like, 
and that's that, that's what it did. You know, that's that's what it does. She, this lady, I I would guess she's probably in her sixties, maybe seventies. Mm-hmm. She watched Deadpool and she loved Deadpool. Yeah, that, that's that's so good. Like yeah. that in general, comic book movies, and it's something that I'm sure other like Kevin Smith that other people talk about. Yeah, um, Marvel has made it. They've brought it to the point where comic book movies, like everyone knows, and people you wouldn't think would you know, get yeah, yeah, one single shit. Are like, oh man, did you see like Thanos in Infinity War? He's gonna be in Infinity War. This Thanos character, he's a big bad motherfucker. I don't know who he is. I'm gonna look him up. Like all this, like people who would never, you would never has think would have any interest in that sort of thing. Yep. No, and and they totally do. And like, yeah, like, like, that's great for like, I I get so, how some people are like they're upset over it because it's yeah. like you know, oh, you're making it mainstream, herp a derp. But dude, you, I, ha- you have to realize. That is the best thing that you can have if you want to see this stuff. If you want to see, you know, these characters come to life on the big screen, you need it to be mainstream because the mainstream yeah. is how it's going to fucking get funded. See, I I get people who don't like comic book movies because they like a different sort of movie. Right. They like more to their movies and they like better stories, blah, blah, blah. It, all those other reasons. And no, I totally I, get that. I, I get like, that. I, lo- I enjoy those movies too. When I have – when if I see com- – when I see comic book fans – that hate on these movies and if they're hating on them for like specific you know they weren't it wasn't true to the adaptation of my the character i love blah, blah, i get that sort of stuff right but right. i think there's a quite a bit and it's internet based because it's always internet based of course it is. there's a lot of that it's popular so i hate it because it's popular yeah the, and I, uh, i'd like to call them the the internet hipsters yeah or who are like that's the only thing they have going whatever's for them. popular they're gonna hate on it right yeah because, I mean, that's, that's literally the only thing they have going for them. They're like an advanced, maybe not an advanced, but like a form of troll. Where they oh, it t- is a troll. It's yeah. totally being a troll. And but, I think, and I've done, I mean, I myself, when I, when I was younger, I used to do shit like that online, too, yeah. just to get reactions out of people. It was totally trolling. Even stuff I liked. Edgy. Like, I've, I mean, I've done that sitting here during the podcast. Yeah, it's true. You have done that, you know, edgelord <laughs> bullshit. You know? Well, not you trying to be an edgelord, but just, just it's, it's literally just trolling to get a rise out of people. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it's, and, and I get it. It's funny sometimes. It's why I think, I, I, at the same time, the amount of money and the views that yeah, these get yeah. that doesn't lie. Well, like, no, I mean, and like I said, like that being yeah. that's the most important part of it all is if you want the money, it's got to go mainstream. Yeah, seriously, like you, well, you, if you want to see it, period. I mean, like yeah, exactly. You, you never would have expected to see any of these characters. And hell, even even at the state we are now, had we not gotten Deadpool, I would have never. Yeah, you know, we've said before, you don't get. Um. Uh. The uh, old man Logan. Yeah. You, you don't get I, Logan. I mean, you, you I, don't, I don't get the movies. We're I got to. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, if Lo- you got Deadpool, Deadpool released. It was unexpected, and it became on a fifty-eight million dollar budget. It is the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time. Yeah. It and absolutely if, if, killed. And, if, and Fox it, went. Oh, there this, is a market for rated R superhero movies. There absolutely is. Which of I, course I, there was. I, don't I mean. Know. Yeah, I don't know what people were thinking. Like, I think maybe they I, I were going was, off of Di- like because Disney and Marvel wouldn't, they won't do one, and I think that's more on their end, like the Disney side of it. Like, that why would we? We don't. They don't need to do it. Yeah, they e- totally don't. Even the characters they have, they could they could make more brutal things, but they don't really need and, to. And you see, when it comes Fox, to, also we see when it comes to Marvel, they put yeah. their brutal stuff on Netflix. On Netflix, I was, yeah. yeah, they've they've got a place for that, and I think. I, I love the Punisher. Oh, yeah. I would like to see another Daredevil, Punisher Daredevil movie. Was great. Yeah, but uh, Punisher has to be rated R, and I think it fits in and doing a long form, doing a a series mm-hmm. fits the Punisher story and the way the Punisher works better than a movie. movie. I mean, I, I absolutely agree. Like the, the Netflix series is fucking fantastic. Yeah. It's genius. But I don't like having seen it, and I've watched it twice now. Having seen it, it's like uh, I I don't believe that what they laid out because it's so perfect in its form. I don't think that could have worked in a two two and a half hour format. No, no, it no. really could absolutely have. not. There's no, Netflix, there's no way. They're great. Yeah, there's, those there's, writers are great at what they do. There's no way you could have taken all of that that you display, even just half of that, even just the first half of the season. I don't believe there was any way that you could introduce Punisher. Do his origin story and have a big bad all in the same. I, I don't feel like it would have worked just yeah. because of how the series progresses. Now, if you took a different approach to it, maybe. Um, but the way they took it, the way they did it, that couldn't work in a movie. In my per- I mean, maybe a two-parter, but the the first Punisher movie, 
Or, I'm sorry, not the first one. The first one with Dolph Lundgren it was Lundgren, and it was fucking awful. The one you're uh, talking the, about, uh, the one, uh, what the hell is her name? Uh, fucking Kevin Smith raves about her. She she directed it. No, no, no. That's the that's the War Zone. That's the second. That's the, the ignore the Lundgren one. That's like the second Punisher movie. Okay. The first one um, was in 2000, uh, like 2004, I think, or something like Back that. Back in the glory days of stuff like Blade. Uh yeah, around Blade, that time. Blade was like ninety. It was what mid nineties, and then er, it went Something into early two like thousands yeah, yeah. with Blade three. And I got the, on the tip of my tongue the actor's name is there, but I can't. I just can't pull it. Right. Um. But that movie, it, they did the origin of the Punisher. But the thing is, he they he was the Punisher, but he wasn't. If you look at that movie more as this is him becoming the Punisher, at the end of that movie, he's the Punisher. Right. Not right. at the beginning, because his family is killed, and then instead of I'm going to. St- fucking kill all criminals he was dead set on getting just revenge for his family so he goes after that crime family and basically wipes them out right. and the ending what he does to him is punisher-esque like one dude is he ties a, a fucking like a uh a c4 explosive uh, the detonator to it um lexi alexander director of warzone that's that's who yes it was. yeah yeah so he does something where he ties the guy the the c4 up and makes the guy hold up the detonator and if his arm drops the the bomb's gonna go off and kill him and walks away and the dude holds it up for like two minutes thomas jane plays thomas frank jane King. yeah he, he's the one that plays frank castle in that one yeah and this one he's a is an fbi agent yeah, they changed his origin to FBI agent. A ba- a, uh, a deal goes bad, and this um, uh, mafia, big mafia guy played by, um, um, oh my god! I just had it. Hold on, it's, let me it's, pull it back up. It's, uh, oh. but I should it, Tom or not Tom Cruise. Um, Talk about John Travolta. John Travolta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should have put a little of that for your period. But uh, Travolta, his son gets killed, so he takes it out on Thomas Jane's uh, family. And wipes the Punisher's family out. I'm sitting here looking at the different ratings for this movie. Oh, it was all over. Some people yeah, no, hated it's, it's it. It's completely all like twenty nine percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's yeah. got a thirty three percent on Metacritic, but it has a modestly a modestly respectable six point five on IMDb. Yeah. And as far as Google people you know, Google users, eighty eight percent of the people like the movie. Yeah. It was a movie that fans like more. It was a dumb action movie, but uh, I mean I still enjoy it and I enjoy it because I think of it as He's not the Punisher yet. The one that with Dolph Lundgren was released in oh, '89. It was fucking awful. I you know I've watched. You a, know the funny thing is parts of it. It has a 5.7 on IMDb, a 28 yeah. percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and 84 percent of Google users like the movie. Yeah, it's and com- I, it might as well be a comedy. I I kind of doubt Google users now. <laughs> you guys it, are disappointing well, me here. Well, like I said, you could watch that movie as a so bad it's good. Okay, so I mean, in, I, in, in that, that particular case, kind of, I, they... I mean, there's plenty of movies for me that fall under that. A Big Trouble in Little China. Yes. Uh, any of the expendable movies are so bad, they're good. Yeah. Um, there was a movie I watched recently because we were talking about it that was so bad it was good. I can't even remember what the fuck it was mm-hmm. now. But, I mean, yeah, there, there's plenty of movies that fall oh, yeah, under yeah. that umbrella for me. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I in that particular perspective, I could totally see – being able to laugh at it and enjoy because enjoying a movie is all that counts. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seriously, it doesn't have to be good. It doesn't have to be structured well. It doesn't even have to tell a coherent story. Did you have fun watching it? Were you entertained? Yes. Fun. Oh, my God. I still remember that fucking uh, screen cap from a thread on 4chan where somebody is like, fun is just a buzzword. <laughs> no, motherfucker. Fun oh is the enjoyment fun of an activity. Fun. Yeah, that's why that that's why I like the Thomas Jane Punisher. There's a scene where that goes on for like, I don't know, I, I can't remember if it's super long or it just feels long. He's fighting this giant Russian dude, and the guy at one point like Thomas Jane's getting his ass kicked, uh, the Punisher's getting ass kicked, and he pulls a like hideaway gun out. Uh, from under a drawer and aims it at the dude and it's like a fucking 357 magnum right the dude picks up a fucking uh like a 35 pound dumbbell pushes thomas james or the punisher's arm to the table and smashes the barrel and uh, he, the punisher just looks at it and turns it and it's completely smashed flat wow. and then he's just like oh fuck and then gets thrown through like six walls <laughs> The whole fight is fucking awesome. He throws a pot of boiling. Honestly, water. you know what that that sounds like something that would happen to John McClane. It no, it totally is. It's no, almost like, like, a, it's almost that, a diehard esque movie. 
I mean, and you know what? If you're describing it that way, yeah. I, I might have to sit down and it's watch totally it. It's totally worth a watch. I don't, I, I, like, I get its story's not great, but I mean, it's a fucking Punisher movie. Like, he fights basically, he, like, fucking gets uh, an assassin, Johnny Cash, comes after him. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's such a fucking That sounds good absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, and it. then the ending, the way he fucks up John Travolta's family right. is brutal. I mean, which is. Right in line with Punisher. It's weird. That's why I said it. at the end of that movie, he's the Punisher. And that's why I've said it before on here. The short film Thomas Jane put out called Dirty Laundry is him fucking being the Punisher. And that's why I wanted him to continue being the Punisher. But right, I mean, right. it never happened, but that's okay. We I got mean, we got, we got, yeah, we, we got someone who is John, immensely better. John Barenthal is the Punisher. Perfect. Like, I, I don't know much about the Punisher. I never did yeah. know anything about the Punisher, but for me, the Punisher is John. Like that's oh, yeah. John, that's John. Like like how Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool. Uh, fucking Patrick Stewart for me is John Luke Picard. And he will forever be Professor X for me as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Like like these are characters. They're iconic for their actors. There's no better actor to play them in my honest opinion. And I, dude, come on. Yeah, Warzone. Like that's what honestly I people really didn't like Warzone. Um. Because that was one of the biggest, that was one of the most comic book, comic book movies. Is that was, it looked like a comic book. The story was like a comic book. It had like scene transitions like a comic book. It was over the, like super over the top. He kills a parkour, nin, like street ninja dude with a fucking RPG at one point. It is fucking just that so out amazing. there. That amazing. It is. And it's, it's a, um, it's an amazing movie if you like that. If you like the comics, if you're into I mean, specifically Punisher uh, Max comics, because it's fucking brutal gore. It's a gore fest. And I mean, it's perfectly rated R. He caves in this dude's face because the guy's been doing too much coke. <laughs> <laughs> he just <laughs> fist into face. You know, I'm, I uh, I never saw Warzone either. Yeah. Um, I, in fact, I don't even think I've saw I've seen this Punisher movie. I think I can vaguely remember seeing, like, maybe not advertisements, but something, you know, movie poster or something for uh, the original Dolph Lundgren one. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I saw like the the the, the cover well, on Google Image Search when I searched for it just now. It's like that looks very familiar. Yeah. I mean, I would have been three when that movie released, so mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily saying, oh yeah, I, I saw that. Oh but, yeah, I was a year old. When that but it's like, yeah, I I remember, I can remember it. I have, yeah. it, it looks familiar. It's a young Dolph Lundgren in a leather jacket on a bike. It's like, it's just the fact like they picked Dolph Lundgren for it. Yeah. It was so off. Cause he doesn't sound like the Punisher should sound. He like, he's, he's too big. Almost yeah. Yeah. To be no, the Punisher. I, I would say, I would definitely say, you know, he's way too buff of a dude. Oh like, yeah. The Punisher's in great shape because he's, he's military. But... Well, he's military. He keeps himself at peak physical condition and they make it a point. And sometimes in the comics to point out this dude's 50 years old. But he will fucking smash you through a brick wall. Oh yeah, no, I mean, and you see that kind of thing yeah. all the time. Like, like you see the Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen's in his fifties. Yeah. The dude doesn't look any older than I am. Oh no, Donnie I'm... Yen looks younger than he did the first time I saw a Donnie Yen movie. It's amazing. it's insane. Like so, yeah, like he, he it's stays not like Tom in shape. Cruise effect. Yeah, yeah, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, and uh, 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 oh, Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. They just, these dudes don't age. Will Smith, yeah. I think. If you told me that Will Smith put the gray in his beard in that video where he's talking to that AI, I would believe you. Yeah. Because there's no way that dude is aged. <laughs> he looks just... – like I look at him now and I look back on like a movie like iRobot or something that was 10 years ago. I don't see much of a difference in this dude. Like the dude just doesn't age. Yeah. That's amazing. And honestly, that's what you, when you don't get addicted to things, you don't get, you know, smoking oh, I mean, and coke it, and all that, that shit. You have, that's what happens. You have that kind of lifestyle where, oh, I need to get in shape, make two phone calls. And it's like you've got a professional chef who's going to prepare know, do whatever all whatever you need. Yeah, yeah. You get, you get you've got a nutritionalist who's, who's like, okay, here's what you need to trainer. do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, like, uh, in home gym. I mean, that's that's that, that's great. For him and them. Oh, no, I'm absolutely fine. I with love that. seeing, I don't watch his channel, um, but I'll watch sometimes clips and videos yeah. from Will Smith. Yeah. And the fact that he's just kind of like, he's just leveled out. Like he's just being a dad. He's just being a dude now yeah. and all these clips and stuff. 
and seeing interviews with him nowadays compared to like even when he was younger when he was like funny off the wall there was a period of time where he got super serious yeah like even outside of the serious movies yeah where it was like i didn't really like will smith that much like i liked him as an actor right but it was like why what you know what's wrong buddy what happened like i know you don't want to be fucking like will from the uh yeah you don't want to be show. you don't want to be will smith from from you know fresh prince of bel-air uh, yeah but, but I get that. This was like, but you were kind of being like, he was like super serious. Yeah. And then now, where he's totally just like, I'm a dude and I'm a dad. I'm just Will Smith. I don't fucking care. He's fucking great. Like making fun of his son's music video and all the shit he's doing. I mean, done. him going on Jimmy Kimball and just saying, hey, listen, when I was his age, I didn't have social media because I no one could see that oh, I was this stupid. Oh, thank God I did. Yeah. yeah. Thank no God one I could didn't. see I was this stupid. And his, the look on and Jaden's face is like, really, Dad? He's just, <laughs> like, <laughs> you really just said that? Say that? <laughs> Like, oh, yeah, no, man. he totally means that because Jaden, you've said some he dumb shit. You just some stupid dude. shit. You, yeah. You've said you've said and done some dumb fucking shit, man. I, I get it. You're young, but dude, he's he's also stop not only dumb young. Shit. He's in a position where, uh, and, and through I mean him, him partially himself, his music and stuff, he yeah. made his own career. Right. Where he's got an audience and a voice. So of course, like stupid shit comes to his mind. He's gonna say it. I could imagine <laughs> if I was a little bit younger. And I had an audience and a voice. I'd say stupid. Fuck, I could go back to where I didn't. And I have fucking MySpace. And I have stupid shit posted on there. Uh, yeah, I, Stuff that uh, I'd be like, oh, God, I never want to see yeah, this again. Uh, some of the cringy shit you posted yeah. when, when MySpace was still a major oh, thing. Like, it's still a thing, of course. It still exists. There's there's not nearly They haven't many... wiped it from the internet yet. <laughs> no, there's not. I'm, I'm, dude, my profile still exists. Yeah, I'm so like, I look back at mine. I, I, I haven't logged in because I have no fucking idea. A, what email I address i've used and be what password i use uh, and i honestly looking back the current email address i've used i've had this email address for eight years mm -hmm. it's, it's my primary it's my it's my life but we're talking with myspace we're talking like 2006 2007 i have no fucking idea what email address i was using 12 years ago yeah no fucking clue at all that's i mean i've got i've got three email addresses two i actually use one is spam bullshitty. Right. The other one's my, like, it's my more official email address. Right. Um, and the spam bullshit one I've had for a long time. And there was a, I had another, I had a Yahoo back when Yahoo wasn't total garbage shit cancer. Um, so before Yahoo existed? Yeah, kind yeah. of. Like, it was a long, it was always shit, but it wasn't, it wasn't as much shit as it is currently. Oh my God. But, um... Back then, but that email address, I'll still get emails on the address that it's like linked to, yeah, or that it uh, like security Whatever. codes yeah, and stuff yeah, go yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll still like people have, like that email address. People have tried to compromise it probably a hundred times. I don't know why it's not like it has. It's linked to MySpace, and like at one time I was gonna get free Rosetta Stone, so I got advertised. If you ever the worst places ever to give your email address to i guarantee you rosetta stone is probably in the top five they email you every single like every other day so this is why i like duolingo they send me like one email every eight months yeah like i maybe not even that often because i mean i got the, i had the app for a while i was teaching myself german i yeah. stopped caring because i give up on things yeah um and, uh, yeah, I was teaching myself German with that app and every now and then the app would remind me, Hey, come on back. And eventually, you know, that, that was, we're talking like four years ago. I've had, I've literally had like 12 phones since then because I'm a whore for gadgets and, um, but I can afford it. So, yeah. you know, I'm not going hungry or my kids aren't starving cause I don't have kids. My bills are getting <laughs> hey. paid still, but yeah. you know, I, I sit there and I'm, I'm like, I you know, the app would notify me. I just got an email for like yesterday saying, "Hey, like uh, advertising, I think some new features." And I'm sitting there thinking, like, when the fuck was the last time I got an email from these guys? Yeah. And I'm thinking, like, I don't know, 2014, yeah. 2015. And I didn't even like. I didn't even purchase it. I like. I I think I was gonna do their free course, and at the time, um, I had a very old old fucking bio computer, and I could not run. Their course because I could not uh, my the graphics uh, man you know card was so bad Sony Vio I don't know if they're still around because I haven't researched them they, but oh they, they that's were a, a great brand. computer that's for a brand its time. I miss like I, I yeah. miss their laptops their laptops were one one of the first laptops that I can remember 
that were super sleek and super thin like the yeah. MacBook Airs and Ultrabooks of today. I wanted a Sony Vio so bad. Sony Vio, uh, when I uh, sold computers at Circuit City before they went fucking kaput, um, I would push people towards Vios even though – like it, when I could – and, and it was generally the people who I knew weren't going to buy the services. Right. If I thought I could get you to buy the fucking stupid tech services, I was pushing you to the cheapest HP I could because I knew I could load somebody with a bunch of fucking in-home setups and set up your computer in-store bullshit. Which, but, I mean, uh, I, I want to say that's such a shame. Oh, it was so that's, shitty. that's, but that's the that's only way we were, you could make money. That's the only way I could keep my job. Right. Like, that's what we I'm weren't saying. on like, commission, yeah, that's, that's... but every single day was you didn't sell. You need to sell more of this. You need to do more add-on. Blah blah blah. But I would love selling the bio because while they would bitch about that stuff, right? Sony Vio was one of the only computers we had a markup on because it was already expensive. Right. Sony didn't cheap out on their shit because they wanted to sell you extras. Sony sold you a fucking great computer, and the Vios were they were really good. Oh uh, yeah, I mean. I, I like I said, I still want one today. If yeah. Sony were to announce, I, and like I said, they could very well still be around, and I wouldn't doubt it if they still were. I wouldn't doubt it if Sony still makes the Vio. Probably switched over to just laptops or something. Maybe. Uh, or maybe I know I know they they killed a lot of their some of their alternate businesses off, but yeah, um, if they still make a Vio and they're still a, half as good as they were in two thousand eight, I would probably buy one today. I mean. Uh, ultra thin, ultra light, ultra portable computers. Like that's my thing. Like that's why the the, you know, the laptop that sits here and runs our studio. That's why it's an ultra book. It's it's oh. an old ultra book, but it's an ultra book, and because it's super light, it's powerful, and it's it's easy. You know, and at one time it was portable. The battery's gone to shit now. Yeah. I don't think it'll last more than an hour now. <laughs> but. Uh, I mean, dude, you know, I like, all right, so, you know, I got the power strip here, the power line filtering power strip. I turn it off and everything shut down by the time I turn that off. Mm. But the laptop still needs to charge the battery a little bit when it comes back on. Because during that week, it just loses that much charge. And this light will stay on for like half an hour before it turns green again and says, hey, it's charged. So, I mean, I don't know. So, it... It looks like Sony discontinued bio, discontinued yeah, that's, that's, selling computers. That's kind of what I thought they did. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I know they consolidated a lot. Well, consolidated was the word I originally used, but that's what they did. They consolidated a lot of their business and cut out things where it just either wasn't profitable or wasn't viable to keep going. Yeah. So, so because their their computers were their computer side was not working. However, Vio is now its own company. Oh, well, that's cool. I might have to look into them. I mean, and, uh, they still sell one laptop. <laughs> it looks like that, that's something. But, yeah, they're still advertising. So I mean, hey, maybe it's still great. Hey, maybe it's a thing. I mean, just, you know, Sony did the same thing with their cell phone company. They, they spun or uh, they sold either they sold off Ericsson or Ericsson became its own thing. Mm-hmm. So just I mean, spun it off. Yeah. I mean, so that that happens from time to time, and the Vio name still does mean something to me as a computer tech because I remember working on Vio desktops, and they were a joy to work on. You know, like maybe not like okay. One thing I'm gonna give Dell is their their desktops mm-hmm. at least are really easy to work on because they make everything just they they put shit in their computers that allows you to just pull drives out and shit. It's really yeah. easy. Disassembling the computer might not be easy. But taking drives out, replacing parts, they make that dead simple. Yeah. So, I mean, I got to give that to Dell. I still fucking hate them. <laughs> they still make subpar piles of shit. But some of their, some of their stuff's still pretty good. Uh, a friend of mine uh, from Michigan that I used to hang out with a lot and play D&D and stuff with. Yeah. I remember that his family, they would buy every year. I think it was every couple of years, I think. Yeah. They would buy, um, like, top of the line Dell laptops. And do the full protection plan, and uh, Dell's. You're talking thousands of dollars. There. Well, yeah, they're, you're talking like an eleven hundred dollar laptop and like a four to five hundred dollar protection plan. But they would seriously take those laptops, and you could fucking throw it off a bridge as long as you could recover it uh, or chunks of it. You'd send it off to Dell, and they'd send you a brand new laptop. And when they discontinued that laptop, they would send you the next upgraded version. That's pretty cool. Which was I guess. pretty good. I mean, yeah. But you're also paying out the ass. Oh, yeah. For that you're paying part. a lot for it. Like like Circuit City, we had the same type of protection 
um, where we would offer, you know, oh, hey, yeah, you're buying this $600 laptop. Give us, an, give us another $250 and you can fucking, my, my uh, boss used to tell people uh, he'd close a pen in his all the time and get a brand new laptop. He was full of shit. He probably had done it maybe once in his entire life. But if, if, we'd, if, if we'd all. tell people, we'd, yeah. yeah, if at all, we'd tell people we'd do it all the time. However, the one thing I will say is with laptop keyboards and how shitty they are, yeah. Um, if you can get a protection plan that covers that keyboard, I, you know what? If you're going to use it a lot, fucking do it. I mean, I got to say, uh, laptop keyboards, most of them do suck. The ones on the Macs are pretty yeah. good. Um, touchpads, I still hate no matter where you go. I don't like touchpads. Um, so, guys, I recently bricked my Chromebook. Yeah. And I'm ah. completely missing it. Uh, what I was trying to do was set it up for a Linux install. Mm-hmm. And uh, while it's it's completely foolproof, uh, you all you got to do is follow the instructions. Um and it, it's it's perfect. Were you fucking with it? No, I wasn't. <laughs> it's completely safe, but that doesn't mean well. It's not completely safe. Yeah. It's safe. There is a non-zero chance something might happen, and unfortunately, I fell into that non-zero yeah, chance. There's always and I had I had a bad flash on on the uh, custom firmware, and now my Chromebook will not turn on. Ugh, that's so bad. right now. But it, it, it remind when you said all laptops have bad keyboards. That one. I like that keyboard. Not bad. It's not as good as my Razer, but for a laptop keyboard, especially a key a laptop I'd pay less than two hundred fifty dollars for, it's fantastic. I enjoy typing on it. Was it this last generation of MacBooks that people hated? Yeah, because they had the Touch Bar. Yeah, the last they had the Touch Bar. Oh, yeah. yeah, I the love because I've been stupid. I've been like listening to uh, different like all over because Joe Rogan's got five hundred podcast or five. I'm sorry, like uh, eleven hundred podcasts. He's got over a thousand. You're lowballing him. So, he, yeah, I mean, maybe because there's also other stuff he does that I don't really care about the UFC stuff. Yeah. But um, I just was listening to one where they were talking about the MacBook and knew at the time and how much they fucking hated the keyboard. They didn't like the new keyboard. Yeah. The stupid fucking touch bar. And I'm just laughing like, ah, I remember this. <laughs> People pissed off about the stupid fucking touch bar. I mean, we're talking about laptops, though. Yeah. I would like to see Vizio because this, this laptop's a Vizio laptop. Mm-hmm. I would like to see them revisit i like this design the flat the, yeah yeah really thin. the ultra book and all that yeah. they they made like four models they haven't made anything since they yeah. made they released all four models at the same time they were ludicrously expensive because a laptops are kind of expensive but b the thinner you make oh you pay for the portability yeah, they, and the they, smaller size and i love portability i like being yeah. able to honestly um i'm eyeballing the newest dell xps i know i just hate it on dell yeah. But they, like I said, they do make good products, and uh, they have the XPS 13-inch, uh, like, 9650. Mm. Um, it's a 13-inch laptop with a 1080p screen and has phenomenal battery life, and it's an ultra-portable. It's, it's like, fucking half an inch thick. Yeah. It's, like, super thin, easy to sell, carry. I kind of want it, mm. and I was looking into buying it. Um, I mean, not right now, obviously, because I got, like, $3,000 in debt I have to get out of first, but... Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking about like, you know, that might become a new a new thing for me since I killed my Chromebook. <laughs> I love the difference. Like you're looking at, oh, you know, I want this ultra thin laptop. Me, I'm like, I want this really small assault rifle, <laughs> this pistol assault rifle. You know what the funny thing is? They're about the same price. <laughs> yeah, this is 1500 I was, oh man, I was looking at a gun, uh, gun broker like, oh, I want it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm gold, looking. Gold trim on the fucking thing. No, Luke. Fuck, uh, I was like, I don't even want to shoot it. I want to just get like go to the range one time, like like someone would show off like a really expensive watch. Like, yeah, I got like a fourteen karat gold trim on that rifle. <laughs> I, I, you know, speaking of watches, I got my Emporio Armani watch, and I love yeah. how minimally branded it is. Mm. Like you can tell it's a, it's an actual thing. It has one little logo on the button. Mm-hmm. And that's how you know it's not a shitty thing. Yeah, it's not the because you know you see like the Louis Vuitton bags and the other Armani things. When you see the logos plastered all over it, oh, I fucking that's why that, I can't stand. That's that the stuff. low end of their stuff. Yeah, that is the absolute lowest end shit that they release. That is the stuff that they release to make poor people feel rich. Yeah, literally, like that's what it is. Well, that's all those brands that do that that cost so like super expensive, mm-hmm. like for shirt I mean, shoes. All that shit. Right. Fucking uh, Supreme. Oh, those guys are geniuses. But that's why they do it. <laughs> it's so fantastic because their shit's so cheap. Oh, yeah. But it just says Supreme on it. Just and that's all Supreme. it takes. Oops. And that's, I mean, it's, it's fantastic. 
Luke just punched his microphone I know, again. I did. You've punched the shit out of your. I sure have. Though. I hit my head on it. Yeah, yeah, no, I hit I my head on it. I just gonna point it out. And I just went over. No, no, we're just gonna keep going, man. We're gonna yeah. fucking. I, I, I hit my head on my mic early, so you hear that thunk. That was me just, you know, headbutting my fucking mic. <laughs> you wanted to hit it before, because uh, I know we got to be getting close to an hour at this point. Oh yeah, we're we're about ten minutes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we get to the hour, there's one thing I wanted to talk about this week, real quick, because um, it fucking pissed me off immensely fuck ubisoft and fuck the end of far cry 5 that ending was so fucking terrible and it kept the game kept going and it kept hinting towards that happening and the whole time i'm like please don't please don't do that cop no, out don't ending. do this don't do, don't this. do a fucking shitty cop out ending like so that I get, all right you guys i'm just gonna go through it out there it's probably gonna be spoilers from here oh i out. i mean i don't even have to go over the whole thing i just say it's a fucking annoying terrible ending what happened like, so, like, don't obviously. Okay, no, no, nah, fuck it. We'll go ahead and spoil it. Yeah. So, I mean, by now, something I talked about that the first time it happens is really awesome is when you're pulled. You you have caused enough mayhem that the dude sends people at the one of the commanders sends people after you, right? And they like drug you and take you, and you get busted out before you end up in like a a fucking prison camp type thing, right? Um where they were going to fuck mind control torture you or whatever. Um, they do that w- the first time that happens, I thought it was genius and awesome. Right, and right. an open world game for that to happen. Um, it then happens in every sector, every single time you reach a certain point in the resistance meter, and it happens three times, and then the boss will show up. It's after the first time in that one sector, it is no longer fun. And it no longer works for an open world game that is essentially Saints Row. Right. Like Saints Row 2, maybe a little bit of Saints Row 3, because you have a gun that shoots fucking shovels now. And, you know, shovels are one that kills. Yeah. Like, it is a game that is, like, it's GTA-style crazy humor. Um, It's got, like, you're running around with a fucking dude named Herc with a rocket launcher and his cousin with a fucking flamethrower. And they're talking about, and they're having a conversation about the fact that Herc is, uh, has got the same name as his father. And do you ever think about, uh, your dad, your mom saying your dad, your name when she's porking your dad? It's like, it is off the wall craziness. And then to have these moments where, you're driving with teammates. Right. You maybe you even just run over uh, a cultist who's next to uh sit, like one of their uh, like they've kidnapped somebody and they're right, holding a right, hostage, right, right. and you happen to kill those persons and free them, which raises a little bit on that meter. Immediately you hit one of those points, and they it'll say like they're coming after you. But other than that first section, you just um and get taken. I was flying a plane once. And it just drugs me, and I passed out like they had, what, they fucking flew a plane, a fly-up that bit me or some shit that drugged me and took me with a passenger in the plane with me. So did they just fucking crash? Like, and then you have to do the scripted fucking, like, moments. And it's like, you, I like your scripted writing sometimes, and your story, and I like the fucking open world stuff. Right, right. Stop trying to force them together. Because it doesn't fucking work that way. Yeah, no, I, I can't imagine it being all that no. great. Especially, I mean, if you're in the middle of flying a plane, there's no yeah. like, drug in me, really? Yeah, like, you'd be doing random stuff. Like, I'm oh, I'm having fun. I'm going to go over here and take out this fort. Or I'm going to go do this other thing, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm grabbed in the middle of doing that and pulled away to do some stupid fucking shit that's predictable. Like, at one point, they essentially uh, they mind control you with um between i guess the drug and uh and that's not really pavlov but they they do like that russian mind control from the 60s where he plays a song and it makes you lose your fucking mind and murder right, everyone right, yeah, yeah. it's stupid it's like no i see what you're doing i see what you're going for this isn't one how it fucking works and it's not even at the level of being saints row style funny like the rest of the game is right right it's just stupid <laughs> And then the end of the game 
they do it again where you, I'm like, I've defeated all the lieutenants. I'm going to go after the fucking head dude of this cult. Mind you, every single time I've defeated one of those lieutenants, it does the Assassin's Creed thing where even though you've just jumped from a building and stabbed this person in the back of the head, it cuts to you holding them and them doing a fucking speech of, oh, I don't need it to save her, to uh, help my family, blah, and then they die. It does that sort of thing where I've shot a dude out of an airplane, he's parachuting to the ground, and I've strafed him with the guns on my plane. 50 caliber machine guns. He's not landing on the ground and taking the time to tell me he thought I, uh, he was doing the right thing. No, at that he's point. He's fucking dead. At that point, he's he's a Swiss cheese equivalent of meat. Exactly. He's, he's a, literally he's a, a pile Swiss of meat. meat. He's a Swiss meat bag. Like, like, come on. One of the guys I killed by sniping him in the head with a rifle after having to shoot him like 14 times because it's stupid. Like, the way they Health do boss fights is yeah. dumb for being a game with fucking guns. So I've already shot him 10 times and finally killed him by shooting him in the face with a 50 caliber rifle. And then he's like crawling backwards on a rock with like a little bit of blood on his chest. Like, oh, he said this would happen. He said I'd have to be a sacrifice. Er, no, I just shot you in the fucking face. You're dead. You don't get to monologue. You don't get to preach to me any fucking more. I have a Barrett 50 caliber. I could kill a building. I could kill a fucking building. <laughs> like, come on. And then you get to the end and I'm literally driving up to fight the final boss with with two teammates yeah. uh, in a fucking truck with a 50 cal machine gun on the back. I pull up to the compound, and as I pull up and, like, it goes into cutscene mode where the, the, the gun goes away, I turn around, they've disappeared. They're not in the truck anymore. They didn't get out. They just fucking disappeared. I'm like, oh, okay, game. I see where this is going. So I walk up, and he comes out of the church, and it's just this shirtless fucking crazy person and you. And I'm like, and I shoot him in the head. No, uh, apparently not. He just starts fucking preaching and monologuing. I'm like, you have been murdering, not murdering, but you've been killing this cult who are literally dragging people out of their homes and burning them alive in piles or feeding them to their wolves or indoctrinating them or doing all this other horrible shit, and you're going to sit here and have this dude lecture to me about how I am a violent person, and I solve everything with guns and bullets. I mean, they literally mutate wolves to just eat people, and he's going to lecture me on how I'm the violent one. And then he fucking, um, he's like, and your friends, I, you, I got them again, blah, blah, blah. It's like the people that you've gone through and saved this whole game. Yeah. He has your partners who you've been playing and fighting with the whole time. They come in with like this little misty shit to identify that they've been mind controlled. Oh, that sounds and so retarded. they walk up with your other police officers at gunpoint. And of it's course, like yeah. immediately face palm to, oh God, this is stupid. So you do this stupid, he again offers to let you walk away just like at the beginning of the game. Right. Which is the bad, and I use quotations, the bad ending right. is you walk away and apparently you're driving down a, the road and that song that mind controls you from the one of the three lieutenants starts playing and the game goes black like you just murdered everyone. That's the bad ending. The good, and I use even stronger quotations, ending oh is you refuse, at which point he summons a hurricane i guess what? is the best way to put it like there's they're literally surrounding this little island is like the eye of a hurricane um your people who have been your partners this whole time start shooting at you you have to shoot them with bullets they fall to the ground and when you get them up they're no longer mind controlled so you have to kill all of them. Meanwhile, the boss, the, the cult leader, is running around shooting you and shooting them. And if they're down long enough, he'll run up and stab them with a needle and they're still mind controlled with bullets out of guns oh, that kill people. So you do this. You have to do this for seven, like, I think it was 17 characters. What it's 16 or 17 because it's not only the characters you meet throughout the game. Not, uh, it's all of your assist partner characters except for the animals. Because that pissed me off. I wanted the bear to come and maul his fucking face <laughs> Cheeseburger. Off. Cheeseburger. Get a fucking cheeseburger out of that guy's asshole. Um, like, fucking, you, you have to shoot them, get them up, do that like 16 fucking times, and then you can finally shoot the boss. You shoot him. 
He does the stupid falls to the ground thing like he's hurt. And you walk over and handcuff him as the storm clouds go away. And everyone stands there for a minute like it's finally over. And then a nuclear bomb goes off. Yep. Nukes start dropping. And uh, you have to run away. You jump into a car dragging him with you. You start driving away the whole time. They're going, oh, my God, he was right. He was right the whole time. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we're all going to die. You drive uh, to where there's a bunker. Uh, on the way there, you crash. The cult leader drags you out. And the next scene is you see the guy who's been your radio operator the whole time, Dutch. He's a cool character. He's lying dead on the ground and you're t- handcuffed to a table. And the cult leader lectures to you for like 10 minutes. And then the credits roll. It is one of the worst video game endings ever. Like the closest thing is Mass Effect 3. And you know how much I hate that video game ending. It is, it's like, and it's the whole time they're hinting towards it certain ways. And it's like, please don't do that. Just let me, let me beat the bad guy. Kill the cult leader. You can have some other twist. Let me just beat him. I was reading the subreddit for the game because I couldn't believe that it was that bad. And in the subreddit, somebody's like, you could even have a bad ending if all they did was something where you fucking do your stupid final boss battle. Your whole group goes to the bar they all hang out at. You're sitting at the bar. And then on the radio, you start hearing like sirens. And then the fucking flash, like the nukes going off. And the game ends. That would have been a great twist ending. That would have been like... um. Uh, the Kevin Smith movie. Uh, Red State. Red State. Like yeah. Red State, the ending where the apocalypse happened. That sounds amazing and fun. In this game, in the whole, everything that's set up, it is all just thrown away. Everything you've done, all the story it's done before, it's like, man, fuck it. We don't need that. We're going to have this. What a twist! It's so fucking it it immediately made me go i really was enjoying this game and now i don't want to fucking look at it well uh, okay um wow yeah That's it's fucking that stupid. sort of fucking terrible well, there you go guys fuck far cry 5 fuck ubisoft man okay guys on a final note <laughs> before we get i down. just had to fucking rage about that shit but god of war is so good it made me forget about that there we go god of war makes up for play, far cry 5 being play awful. dad of boy it's so fun go play dad of boy great fucking meme <laughs> you know, i love it so one thing i want to touch on before we, yeah. we wrap this up uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. the google duplex thing uh guys it, it's a thing now where there's there's a feature coming to google assistant where they can make phone calls for you to place like appointments and stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play this clip for us in real time. Um, it's about a minute long. It's uh, Google. They use Google Assistant to place a phone call for an appointment for a haircut. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and play that. Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. That's um, Google Assistant. I'm looking for something I on May third. Kind of hate it. Yeah. So I give me one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Everyone laughs. Sure, what uh, time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do so not robotic. have a 12 p.m. I wish available. It was like 12 the closest we have to that is a 115. 12 p.m. works. Anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m. <laughs> Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? 10 a.m. to Just 12 p.m. Just a woman PM. haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. See, ah, no. That's so wrong. Especially it doesn't tell you. Like, all right, I got to be honest with you. On the one hand, for someone like me, I have social anxiety. I hate making fucking phone calls. I'm okay with this on on in that particular niche. Yeah. But I got to be honest with you, um, as much as I love the convenience that my AI powered things here bring me. I'm not so sure I'm fully comfortable with this. Especially I, like, no, I, and it doesn't alert the person that they're talking to a fucking robot. I mean, that was one of the things that MKBHD touched on. Like, yeah. are, is there ever going to be that, yeah. you know, where they let them know that? Cause in, in a way that could be, that could be seen as a, like an ethical thing, an ethics thing. Like, are, do you know you're being, you're talking to a exactly. robot? You know? I and, wish, I wish what's the client's name. I wish it was like the client's name is Lisa. <laughs> like that would be perfect. 
I would, then you know, okay, I'm talking to a fucking... I'm, I'm talking to... An s- AI or whatever you would... Live action recording type shit. Yeah. yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, I just wanted to touch on that. That That is super weird. I like where Google is going with this stuff, but yeah. it, that's just... That, it makes me somewhat uncomfortable. Like I said, I hate making phone calls. I don't know what it is. I have this phobia about no, phone, yeah, I, making I phone calls. Get it. And it's something I've had since childhood. I, I, like I said, I don't know what it is. I'm someone who it's I hate anxiety. Of yeah, well, yeah, but like I, on the phone. I, I'd rather go in person and do it. Like, mm-hmm. how fucking sense? How much sense does that make? I'd rather interact with a person than talk to him on the phone. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know what it is, but yeah, I just, I wanted to touch on that. I wanted to play that for you guys, <laughs> I so mean, that you, you could listen to that for those who are not in the tech space. This is where Google is going with Google Assistant. On a similar, uh, similar thing, just it just reminded me. I saw the uh, and the. Uh, fucking image of it this morning yeah. the video uh boston dynamics created a running robot oh my God. creepy as fuck looking a running Horrifying. two-legged robot yeah you know i mean <laughs> we've had the walking robot we had a little, yeah. little, little asimov from toyota and that was really fucking cool now we got the two-legged running robot by yeah. boston dynamics well, bo- here dude the zombie apocalypse isn't going to be zombies it's going to be fucking robots boston dynamics robots because they look creepy as fuck when they run that's, that's or what it's gonna be. we would release an army of boston dynamic robots to save us from the zombies and then of course they'll take over and we'll be somehow slaves yeah, to boston somehow. dynamics robots um although i will say osimo looks adorable yes the boston dynamics whatever they make the walking ones the one who the, 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 the four-legged dog ones that can open oh, the doors I like oh those. my god that's... but like the one who they show it like picking up boxes while the dude's knocking the boxes out of its hands and shit <laughs> like that one like those robots they look terrifying they have giant tubes and backpacks and fucking like i gotta say the one where they it was knocking i actually felt bad oh i did robot. too i, I felt like we box. deserve we deserve it when the robots rise up and when kill the, us yeah, all because, <laughs> because you're being a dick You're right being now. A douchebag to this poor robot. Like, how, why? Why? I love the it? videos where they add in, like, "Oh, well, fuck you too." <laughs> so good. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up there because we, we we're a little over an hour, which yeah. happens from time to time. But I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. We didn't talk about the thing we came in here to talk about. I, okay. I got out the part I wanted. <laughs> we do that all the time. You guys are used to it. So. I got to rant about that fucking shitty ending. Um, so, you know, find us on our website on godlygeeks.com. Yeah. You know, we're on the, we're on the Facebooks. We're on the Twitters. Tweeters. Tweet know, at us. We're on, uh, Check out our Discord. Check out our Discord. Yeah, come on, join in our Discord. You know, join in the shenanigans, which we need more of. <laughs> the chicanery. The chicanery. Yeah, I like that word. That's a good word. <laughs> That's a good word. Um, you know, go to Patreon, throw us a buck or two. You know, when you want to yeah. help us expand a bit. You don't need to, though. We're doing fine. But uh, yeah, you know, do you know just whatever. Spread the word. You know, share us with your other nerdy, dorky friends who enjoy two guys talking into a microphone over a name shit. Yeah, if you want to hear us talk. <laughs> I mean, that's all it is right yeah. now. So, all right, guys, for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. I was Luke. You guys have a good day. Peace. Peace.